Welcome to Ridgecrest Talk, your host Paul Vanderwerf. Uh, enjoying what's, what's starting to be a, a real warm summer. Uh, some might say it's already a hot summer. I'm here <laughs> with the, uh, the, the folks from Delacour Ranch, a nice place to get away, uh, not too far from Ridgecrest, uh, going up to the Sierra Nevada, uh, just in the shadow of Lone Pine. And uh, Julie, why don't you introduce yourself and, and your gang for the audience and uh, and then we'll get more into uh, what Delacour Ranch is up to. Oh, thanks, Paul. It's really great to be here. So my name's Julie Fote, and I am um, I have the privilege of operating Delacour Ranch outside of Lone Pine, uh, just at the base of the mountains, real close to Mount Whitney. Um, just about a uh, little more than an hour's drive here from Ridgecrest. And with me are my um, two fantastic summer interns that I have this year, um, Jose Sandoval and, and uh, Lucy Stein. And they're going to say a little bit about what they're doing, and then we're going to talk about the ranch. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and, and how you found out about Delacour Ranch and why you're there. Um, so my name is Jose Sandoval. I've been er interning at Delacour Ranch since um, March. I've had an awesome time. I uh, found out about the ranch through a youth group in L.A. called um, Audubon Yes, and ever since I found the ranch, I've just been coming back. So you're, you're coming out from uh, the greater L.A. area, basically. Yeah, South Bay. And, and you came out and visited, and then you're like, hey, I'm coming back for more. This is a great place. Pretty much. All right. And then, uh, Lucy, how did you find out about Delacour Ranch? Um, so I was looking for a summer adventure, and I'm from Vermont. And um, Jose was like, I'm working at a ranch. Come out. So I was like, OK. So flew out here and didn't know what I was getting into. But it was super fun and really cool to be with all the animals and harvest lavender. And now I'm doing public relations and interning. And it's been wonderful. And we've gotten lots of things going on. So. Right, and, th and that's a, a great part of what we're seeing all over our area right now is we have the Pacific Coast Trail, we have a lot of hikers, we have everybody getting out for the summer, mm -hmm. and enjoying everything. Julie, let's talk a little bit more. What is the, the mission of, of Delacour Ranch? What, what is it that you guys are doing? Well, I have a personal message to, you know, vision inside of my head about the future of this beautiful 40 acres um, located in a gorgeous green canyon overlooking the Owens Lake. And for um, the, the property uh, started um, in the hands of people on, on record as far back as the early 1860s. Um, the Department of Water and Power of Los Angeles never laid claim to the water on the creek. And so the property thrived in the hands of um, a man named Alfred Carroll in the beginning. Um, and uh, who was a founding member of the Sierra Club, who spent a lot of time up in the mountains. He was from Ireland, eventually went back to Ireland. The property, uh, he stopped paying the property taxes, it fell back into the state. And in the early 30s, it was auctioned off to Chrysler and Cook, who started a pack station. And it remained that up until the 70s and went in, uh, changed hands and we bought it in 98. And when I first set foot on the place in 2005, um, I hadn't come down there because I was a school teacher and too busy. And when I first came, I knew I would live there for the rest of my life. So my personal vision and mission for the property is to leave it better than when I found it and to create sustainable systems, kind of like an eco farm ideal, um, so that maybe perhaps it will be um, forevermore a community asset for an educational tool, for an environmental uh, justice tool, um, for a showpiece for what can happen when you really care about the land and steward it correctly. Right, and locally, um, I think most of the people that have either been there or heard about you know you as the lavender lady because you have this great lavender harvest each year. And uh, how did that come about? Was that planned or did that just kind of happen? Well, it's kind of funny. Um, before we lived on the property, we wanted to put something in there that was agricultural. A lot of people want to put agricultural on their land because it changes their tax base and stuff like that. So. Um, we looked into wine grapes and we looked into different things that might make it and through our research found that the the actual lavender plants several different varieties thrive in the decomposed granite soil that we're also used to lacking clay a lot of minerals but not much organic matter but it does really well in this climate and in that type of soil and also on slopes um, it also does well with very little water so we put um, four different varieties of lavender in in three different large patches and it thrived and did really well. So by the time we moved down, we had it on drip systems and we had people, local people helping us with it while we weren't living there. By the time I moved down there, the plants were gigantic and the harvest time was up to four to five weeks of solid work. And I was a little overwhelmed with that. And I had never grown lavender or had anything to do with it. So when I started harvesting, I started falling in love with it because as a plant, 
it's a magical thing. It makes you feel good. The oils go into your bloodstream. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it really does. And it makes you sleep well at night. It makes everyone happy that comes to see it. So we've been doing it ever since, since 2007. Right. Now, I was up at the uh, ranch today and first chance to see the lavender. Uh, I missed the open house. I actually sent my wife to go visit. I think it was a year or two ago. But to get people at home an idea, a lavender is just look at that, that big tumbleweed bush that's out uh, near your property here in the valley. And it's about that size. We're talking a pretty good sized bush. And it's just, uh, they're in bloom now. So there's this beautiful purple flowers. And, uh, and primarily what I saw was kind of like, I guess you would call plots, maybe a 30 by 20 area that's just wall to wall lavenders. Yeah. And, uh, and I can just imagine if you're harvesting all of those flowers, that, that um, just that one plot could take you know, well over a week. Yeah, it's pretty intense. It, it's seven days a week. It, it usually takes, thank God my interns are here, because it usually takes uh, two to three people seven days a week, all day, every day, to get it all in. And once you get it all in, there's a lot of work that has to be done to it and, and the way you store it. And then once that happens, then you market it at farmer's markets and stores. And we don't make product like oil or lotions or anything. We just bundle it and sell it as decorative bundles. Um, so it is a lot of work, uh, and you're right, I am known as the lavender lady, even though I didn't really go into this from the perspective of that. Um, I ended up that way. We do a lot of other things at the place, but um, during this time of the year, the lavender is going strong. Right, and, and there's actually a tie with Richcrest. Uh, we had, I think it was just a few months ago, we had one of our local uh, ladies who had coordinated a community garden, Dr. Gunasinga, uh, and she had talked about that they actually went up and picked up a truckload of your compost material yeah. that was used to start their community garden. So that was a tie-in from a past episode. And, and it's kind of neat to see because you're not obviously just doing lavenders, but you're doing compost. Uh, what, where are you getting your compost besides just on the ranch? So we started a project five years ago with a group out of Los Angeles called Monobolic Studio to produce um, compost material for direct planting in the Owens Valley to increase local food production. So it was sort of a grant and sort of a partnership with a private group out of Los Angeles. And for five years we did that and all, um, with the exception of what we produce on the property with our own animals, most, I'd say 90% of the materials that we're working with is um, animal manure from mule and horses all that right, are we're all gonna located. Have to go ahead and stop right for a moment. Oh, we'll right be in the right middle back. of my sentence. Uh, we'll be right back, Rich Crest Talk. This is Paul Vanderwerf. Welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk, your host Paul Vanderwerf. We're talking with the uh, folks at Delacour Ranch up near Lone Pine. Uh, Julie, you were talking before break about the composting and the, and the project that you had going on to provide that locally. Let's go ahead and finish that up. Did you have anything else you wanted to Yeah, mention? we transitioned from this being sort of a partnership with an outside group to our own project. And so we continue to take manure from the pack stations at the top of the mountain. And um, it adds to the many enterprises we have at Delacour Ranch. We do meat production with lambs, we do laying hens, we do tons of vegetables. Um, yeah, so an overall picture of, of a diverse set of revenues, including the lavender. And, and actually, it's one of the things I like to see is a natural uh, meeting of the different uh, projects that are going on in the area because you have pack stations that are working all summer, and at the end of the summer, they need to get rid of all this horse manure. And so instead of taking that to a longer distance, they're able to bring that maybe 10, 15 miles away and right. then you're able saves to them a lot and we're supporting each other right and yeah. like i said our, our my mission in general is to create a community asset and i see that as a community right. asset now let's go ahead and transition we have our folks lined up here with some of the um the lavender that was actually harvested today right mm -hmm. yeah and why don't you tell us a little bit about that what you guys do when you're uh, getting involved with with the actual lavender harvest what, what do you guys do <laughs> so our main job with the lavender is um um, around June, all the plants start to bloom, and then um, at the beginning of the season, we just get a few blooms here and there, and so we just harvest them with scissors, kind of like <laughs> painstakingly and meticulously, one by, and one. one by one. <laughs> and at first, it takes forever, but around this time, of, this time of June, we just cut tons and tons of lavender, and then we cut, strip, and then dry them overnight. <laughs> Okay, so, so after you cut them off the plant, you're just putting those into boxes, 
and then bringing them to what a, a central area that you're going to strip those yeah pretty yeah. much and then stripping what is stripping involved? Lucy can show you how it looks so stripping is um, taking a piece of lavender and you pull off all the leaves and so you have a nice clean stem, and then when you put them in the box, they have they become a really nice bundle. And then Julie does all the drying and bundling. And so makes. so basically, it, it strips it down to the stalk mm -hmm. with all the flowers on the top. Yeah. And that and that actually takes what minutes or hours out of the day? Hours. Hours. <laughs> we spend hours stripping every day. So you have enough time to tell your jokes, yeah. tell your uh, childhood growing up. Uh, exactly. That's right. Running lots out of, of stories. things to say. Lots soon. of stories. Right okay. now, and and I think that's one of the exciting things because it's a hands-on activity, and and one of the things we miss is the time to talk. And, exactly. And it, compared to having my kids sit in front of the television set or going up to the mountains <laughs> and harvesting lavender, I think it's an easy pick. There now, you go. Now here we have some folks that are probably becoming experts by the end of the summer. Now, <laughs> what about other folks? Have you get other folks that are able to come up and you allow yeah, them to Yeah, we harvest? actually have flyers all over Ridgecrest and uh, we have a Facebook site and, and this will be our fourth year really reaching out publicly. It's getting better and better um, in terms of how many people know. But people come from all over, Mammoth, Shelfont, Ridgecrest, Riverside. They come and they sit two or three hours in that barn and help us strip. And it's exactly what happens. We have great conversations. Right, and in fact, didn't you say that just this past weekend you had some folks from Ridgecrest? Yeah, we had the Southern Sierra Off-Road Group come fr out of Ridgecrest. We had the folks from um, the City Barbershop come. We had the folks from 1883 Soap Company come, all out of Ridgecrest. So we're already getting a lot of groups. The words yeah. are starting to spread out. And now, yeah. um, which is actually perfect timing because you're hitting the, the the next two to three weeks is that heyday of, yep. uh, as far as how much lavender there is to harvest. Yeah, now's the time. We we basically, the harvest will run through the 4th of July weekend and then we pretty much wrap up. Right, now we already talked about the composting and the, and the community project with that. Uh, you mentioned real quickly, you do have some animals, what, goats, chickens? We raise Cameroon sheep, which are um, primarily oh, okay. um, meat producers. And so we're upping our herd and working with a couple other partners in the area. Again, community assets, everybody working together um, to get a good breeding program going. But we are producing uh, meat lambs every year. And right. we have laying hens and we up our, our flock. We just got 30 new little peeps, we call them. <laughs> and, um, and we produce um, several, like uh, between seven and eight dozen eggs right now per week that we sell at the farmer's market and share with our cabin guests. Um, and uh, so between the meat and the eggs and the lavender and the produce production and the soil and our ca vacation cabins, we kind of have a well-rounded set of revenues. Right. And, and I think to, to give people a nutshell, here we are in this drought, but you have this little creek running nearby. And that creek is really your lifeblood. You're yeah. able to get some energy from the creek, get the water to, to water things and so forth. And it really is uh, almost like going back 100 years in time. To a, to a time when it was very rural. Um, you're relying on yourself. You're not going to go into town uh, to buy something if you don't need to because what, what is it, like a 10-mile drive or so? Yeah, it's about 10 miles. Right, so just to jump in the car 10 miles uh, just to get soap or something is just not going to happen. Yeah. So, and I think those of us that are in the city don't always think about that. Yeah, and it, it's kind of what attracts people to our vacation cabins because there is no electricity. Uh, it is out in the middle of nowhere. It's very, very quiet. It's very, very private and very beautiful. And people are looking for something off the beaten track. So right. we get a lot of people. For and, that. and sometimes our audience, they don't have people that are traveling as much and they're not sure exactly where we're talking about. But basically, if you're heading up uh, north out of the valley, you're going to basically go through Inyo Kern, get on a 395 north. And just as you come into Lone Pine on the right side is the, uh, I think it's the Boulder Creek RV Park. But at the, right, at the right side is the RV park, and you just turn left on that road. Looks like you're going nowhere, but you go up on that road, what is it, about five miles or so? I think it's just three miles to Horseshoe Meadow Road. About three miles, and then you yeah. hang a left, and then it's just a few miles on that road there, and you're right, right there. And I, I have to admit, I did try to find it six months ago, and I drove around and around, and I finally just gave up. And, uh, but, but fortunately, when I went out there today, it wasn't, it wasn't too hard to find. Yeah. And so there are some signs that are up there. Um, you prefer people get a hold of you ahead of time, or do they just show well, up? Well, we have a website, De La Cor Ranch, um, you know, on, on, on the Internet. And um, that's how most people find us, because they just Google lodging or De La Cor Ranch in the Lone Pine area. And, um, and so what we do is we book the cabins through uh, primarily telephone and email. And we don't do credit cards. That's one of our little 
magical moments there is where you can actually go somewhere and not use your credit card. Um, so we do booking to, um, mostly by email, so we have everything in writing. So everybody has a correspondence they can refer to. Right, and that's probably yeah. the key is, is those cabins. You, you actually have kind of the, the, the bronze, silver, and gold, so to speak, that you can actually camp out. Yeah. Or you have um, these, basically they're tent buildings, but they're tents on, on frames that are really nice. Or you can get the fully furnished uh, bedroom with the bathroom and a kitchen. Yeah, and, exactly. And pick either one of those options. Yeah, and people do a combination or sometimes large groups come and use the whole area. We have two summer cabins and one uh, main, main cabin that's open year round with heat. And there's full kitchens, everything's fully bedded, All and right. it's extremely private. We're ready for another break. This is Ridgecrest Talk, talking Delacora Ranch. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk. We're actually talking a, a true uh, move from the city and come out to the country story. Uh, Delacour Ranch up near Lone Pine, a, a great place to visit. Uh, you can get there uh, from the time you open your door and sit down to the time you open your door and you're there in less than an hour and a half. And there's not too many places here in the valley that you can say that about. So it's really kind of a hidden treasure. Um, you might think of camping, you know, a lot of people go up to Mammoth or they're gonna shoot mm -hmm. over to the beach. You're talking a three hour trip or more. And here we're talking uh, less than an hour and a half. And that's, that's something that's a, a real um, uh, positive right now in the summer. You know, things are getting hot. We want to get away where it's a little bit cooler. And we want to be able to save a couple, a couple dimes. Maybe we can make two or three trips yeah. uh, to the one trip of the other. Um, we are talking about some of the things that you're doing, primarily the lavender harvest, which is hot and heavy right now through the start of July. And then you also have the compost project and some of the other um, animals. It really is coming out on the ranch, um, a, a wide variety. I, as I walk through today, um, you have just a lot of different things to see and do. And then your cabins are really the, the, the jewel there that you can come up, you can, you can come up and look at it ahead of time and check it out, and then you can bring your group up there. And, and there's just so much to see and do up there that you really can bring just about any type of group. That's um, have right. You, like if you had the kids, have you had Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, any of those groups? Yeah, we, we work with the Boy Scouts of Lone Pine, and we work with the tribal group. There's an environmental group um, out of the Lone Pine um, Pilot Shoshone tribe, and they do a youth group there. And then we also have worked for four years now with Audubon Yes, uh, kids out of LA. So I really want to, um, as developing our property as a community asset, want to work very, very hard with uh, uh, youth groups in the area, especially local. Right, and um, I can really see that as an asset because you know, once you actually see that location and, and see what you yeah. guys have to offer, it really is. Uh, a special getaway. Now you do have the um, flyer here for your lavender harvest. Yeah, I just want to invite everybody out once again for the lavender harvest through July 5th. Um, this is the flyer that you see around town and on Facebook. The fields are beautiful, the backdrops are incredible, and um, basically people come to either cut their own or buy what we've already cut or, and take it home and strip it and do things with it craftily or buy dried bunches as gifts for Christmas. But it's a wonderful environment, a beautiful thing to do, and everybody leaves happy. Right, and there's so much to do. I mean, you can take your whole family up there. Um, if, if you have some of the, some of the kids or the, um, the, the adults that really like the lavender, That's there's right. also other things that, something's gonna catch your attention. First thing I saw was a whiptail lizard on the ground. Yeah, running a lot of wildlife it. going on, and, and uh, a lot and of bird watching. Right. Rabbits, quail, I saw some quail on the yeah. property. A lot of baby quails uh, right now, and bring carrots for the horses. Kids love to feed the horses <laughs> carrots. Right, and <laughs> speaking of the community support, you had the, um, the compost that was actually, Dr. Gunasinga said was, was key on the community garden here by, the, um, by our police department here in Ridgecrest. Uh, there's one of the projects you're working on up there that we wanted to talk about for a few minutes. Why don't you go ahead and Yeah, so um, this Friday night, the 19th of June, we have our grand opening event for the Lone Pine Farmer's Market. Now we've been running a farmer's market between Independence and Lone Pine. Um, the uh, Owens Valley Growers Cooperative joined forces, all of us uh, growers who really believe in the idea of producing local food. We started a growers cooperative and immediately opened the farmer's market um, two summers ago. This will be our third summer. 
And we have them located at Washington and Maine in a little tiny garden called the IOU Garden um, that was supported by the Metabolic Studio out of Los Angeles. Well, we are moving to a bigger and better and shadier location in Spain Hour Park at the north end of Lone Pine. And this Friday, we have a grand opening event commemorating that move, and we're going to have live music um, with a really, really wonderful guitar player and handmade pizza with a mobile uh, fire oven. Um, it's an artisan's market, a special plant sale, and our usual eggs and baked goods and fresh produce by our seven or eight different growers. And so that's 5 to 7 p.m. this right. Friday in Lone Pine. And really what we're hearing is something that we would like to hear. We would love to just take you and bundle you up, bring you to Ridgecrest, because we would like to have those activities here as well. And that's something that's been a long time in the making. Your farmer's market rotates yes. on Fridays between Independence and Lone Pine. That's right. This Friday will be in Lone Pine, and it will be a special event because you're moving to the park. That's right. And then the following Big Friday, it will be in Independence, and then the next Friday will be back in Lone Pine, right? It that's just right. Back and forth. We we uh, go back and forth, alternate between Lone Pine and Independence because our seven growers believe we need to sell in both markets and we can't isolate ourselves away from each other. Right. So we decide to work together. And the other key for people here in Ridgecrest, if they're driving north for the weekend, uh, they can hit the, the farmer's market you know, as a, a nice place to stop after That's driving right. for an hour and a half to two hours. You're stopping each Friday. It's either going to be Lone Pine or Independence. And they can also check that on the internet right, to see which place it is. Yep, the um, Owens Valley Growers Cooperative does have a Facebook site, and they do have radio spots and, and um, newspaper spots as well. And coming soon, um, by the end of uh, June, beginning of July, we're actually opening um, a public outlet with a bakery and grocery store in Independence. So right, and, and that's my first thought is I'll just I'm just going to drive up there, and if it's not Lone Pine, I'll keep driving up to Independence. But then if you're planning it. That independence is about another 20 minutes. So yeah. you want to plan that extra drive, maybe leave a little bit earlier if it's going to be an independence. Right. But um, I have been to both of those farmers markets and I enjoyed that uh, um, way back. I, I think I, I'd heard about it and actually just went up there just to see it. Yeah. And, and the exciting part is in independence is this cooperative effort that you guys are going to be opening a store there. Uh, what? by the end of the month, end of July sometime? Yeah, so we, our target was early summer, so we're still in that window. And um, the cooperative did uh, get some really generous funding to uh, pursue a uh, food hub and community asset around the areas of food production. So the, Mar the old Mayor's Market in Independence is now gonna become the Owens Valley Growers Cooperative Food Co-op. So there'll be a community space, a um, local bakery, lo locally made bake items, uh, coffee and um, community gathering space, as well as a food outlet, um, like a small grocery store. Right, and the door was cracked open today, so I snuck in there and got a sneak preview. The heating air conditioning guys were doing some work, <laughs> even though it wasn't open. Yeah. Um, I snuck in before they could chase me out. Just a lot of work, furiously just, getting it done right, as fast just, as we can. Just wanted to see that it was, it was up and coming. Yeah. Well, well, we're really excited to have you, Julie, and, and uh, Lucy and Jose, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're just about out of time. We just want to make sure we invite everybody in the community to come up and visit you at Delacour Ranch. And you're, um, we so, can get a hold of you through Facebook, right? Yeah, we, we do have a site, Lucy. Facebook.com slash Delacour Ranch and Cabins. Right, and Delacour <laughs> is D-E-L-A-C-O-U-R. Mm -hmm. And yes. when you look at it, you want to see Ranch and Cabins, because I think somebody else has just put out a for public Facebook page that sometimes you'll see that huh. is not you guys. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we get to the right site. And so that's the easiest way. And then as your phone number, they can give you a call. Yeah, we have a phone number, 760-264-3213. Um, and that is on our flyer that you'll see around Ridgecrest. And the website is delacour-ranch.com. And all the lavender harvest information is on the website as well, as well as the cabins. All right, well, thank you so much. We're out of time. And uh, I think so I'm going to be looking for more, uh, more lavender to come here. Thanks. All right.